Hey, Master Gardeners, have you been driving up and down I-95 seeing these pretty little pink trees in the woodland along the highway? Or maybe you've been sitting at an intersection looking into somebody's yard saying, what is that pretty little pink tree with those mauve-like purple flowers on it? No leaves yet, just flowers. Here we are in late April in Maryland, and these native trees are in full bloom. This is Circus canadensis, one of our wonderful natives that everybody can fit one in your yard. We're going to take a look at close. These are pea. It's in the legume family. So we're going to look at these little flowers and what are the characteristics of a pea flower, if I can zoom in on the blossom. But this is an adaptable tree, zone four to nine, takes soils that are acid or alkaline. As long as it's reasonably moist, they'll grow. This is in my horse pasture. They've been pretty much beat up by my horses who used to rub their bellies on them when they were saplings. I bought them as little saplings from the John Ayton Maryland DNR nursery. So I bought them really small, transplanted them out here into the field and they're just surviving although they typically prefer partial sun this is a full sun situation and I still have them looking lovely it's been about 12 years so let's take a look up close at what is a pea flower so the pea flower is usually five petals and if I can zoom in let's try to find a little guy here let's find one that's sitting by himself so as you can see on this one there's two petals at the very top which are called the banner petals those are called banner. And then the one in this, this one only has one in the center. That's why this is peeling. But usually that one petal in the center is considered the wing. There's usually two. And then at the bottom of the flower is a keel. And that's a fused petal. So that's the typical uh, botanical features of a pea-like flower. And when we say pea-like, it means that it's gonna make a, uh, it's gonna make a pod eventually. So these are pretty little flowers. Let's walk down the hedgerow and take a look at my different ones. This one is really in flower, just beautiful. Look how nicely that one's growing. The habit tends to be sort of vase-like, as you can see. Now this is one that the horses kind of beat up when it was young, but it's got that vase shaped and it's got a broad, typically the red bud has a broad branching pattern, which makes it this wide as it is tall. At its maximum height, it'll go 25 feet pretty much. Might go to 30. Look at this one. This one is not blooming as prolifically. I'm going to have to look into that and see if that's typical of it. But look at this one down here. Nice deep pink colors. There's all kinds of cultivars of these available. There's some now that have golden foliage. This one is just a traditional green. There's forest pansy that has more of those burgundy colors. There's weeping forms. But one of the shortcomings of this little tree is it's really not long lived maybe 20 years you might get 30 out of it so you might want to be a little cautious about how much you spend on some of those fancy cultivars but it's named red bud because the flower blossoms occur in, in and they look like they're in bud their whole life let's look at it it's called califlorus too because it can make blossoms oh, well i better not climb on the fence uh, look at it. It makes flower buds directly on the stems. Little clusters of those pea-like blossoms growing right on the stems. So this pretty cultivar actually had some bees on it just a few minutes ago, but they've moved on now. But it is a pollinator plant. The one shortcoming that I don't like, which I wish I'd stopped up there before, let me walk back up here and see here these pods. These can become somewhat unsightly. If you want to propagate this plant, you can collect these seed pods. Of course, you don't want to wait till this season to collect them. Collect them in the summer months and dry out, but you can stratify them. The birds like to eat these, different kinds of songbirds, and when they fall to the ground, ground birds will eat them. And are deer a problem on these? Yes, deer will eat your red bud. That's one of the shortcomings. There's different um, species of these. There's a Western red bud. There's even species in Europe. But look at this stem. You can see where I cut this. This is what I find is one of the greatest features of having a red bud. I cut these off for a March 28th symposium and I brought these huge branches indoors and forced them in vases of water and you can push the blossoms. So I've been enjoying this tree, not just now, here it is the late part of April, but even in March. So this is a pretty nifty tree to have that if you don't mind cutting it, it's really awesome to for forcing the stems. So there you are, some fun facts, Master Gardeners. Enjoy your Circus canadensis, native red bud.